Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. How are you all children? Good. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. So, what do you think? What's something new in today's science class? Okay. It's something related to heat. Okay. Uh, if you people remember that since past uh, one and a half week, we are talking about thermal energy. We talked about, we have uh, done some uh, scientific experiments as well. Okay. We have uh, seen some simulations as well. And uh, do you remember that how many methods of heat transfer we have studied until now? Yes, we have studied two methods. So do you think that is there any other method of heat transfer? Okay, we'll see. But before doing that, I want you people to just recall your prior concepts and whatever we have studied until now so that we can refresh our prior knowledge and then we can move on. Alright? So, let's recap. I'm going to show you a video related to the two methods of heat transfer. Watch the video carefully and after that I'm going to ask you a few questions related to it. Does it happen in conduction? 
that get transferred into the direct contact between particles and substances. Alright, so all of you are using the card. Very good. Great. Yes, this is correct. Alright. Metals are generally good thermal conductors because they have closely packed particles. Okay, think about the arrangement of the particles in the metal, in the solids and then raise the card. Okay, so all of you are raising green card. That's good. Yes, metals are good conductors because their particles are closely packed to each other. Okay, so the next question says convection current is driven due to the density difference in liquids. Driven means convection current is actually possible or it happens due to the difference in the densities of the liquid. Like remember we have seen the difference in the density of a boiling water. Like what happens to the color when we have four drops. Okay, and when we started uh, heating it, so what, how that convection current it, it has been formed? Okay, yes, it's true. Very good. Okay, so the next question says conduction can occur through a vacuum also. Read the question carefully. Yes. It's not possible. Can somebody tell me that why it's not possible? Yes, yes, you, you can tell me. Yes, very good. Because in vacuum there are no particles. There are no particles of solid or liquid or gas. So that's why conduction is not possible over there. Although conduction takes place in solids. Yes, that's very good. Okay, convection currents are responsible for the transfer of heat in the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, think about it. And recall that lesson in which we have talked about the convection current of the wind around the Earth. How air is formed. Read the question. Yes, do you think convection current are formed around the earth and convection current is responsible for the earth atmosphere? Yes, very good. And uh, can anybody tell me what is the relationship of this convection current with the earth's uh, uh, temperature or earth's uh, atmosphere? Yes, at some places the wind blows fast, slow and it causes changes in weather as well. Okay, so next question this is very easy. Just read it and raise your card. I am not reading it. Yes, it's false. Insulators cannot conduct heat. Alright. So, we have talked about the conduction and convection. Now I want to ask you a few questions over here. Have you ever stood near a fire or in a direct sunlight? Obviously, yes, we do it daily. Uh, you play in your PE lessons when you go out, when you go, when you wait for your uh, van or car. So you must have uh, stood near a fire in winter season as well. Yes, can anybody give me some other example? Yes, eating food and standing near a stove. So, what did you feel? What did you feel? What do you people feel while you stand near any fire source or it is light? Yes, obviously you feel hot, you feel heat coming from that source towards you. Okay. Now, think about it. Was there any physical contact between you and the heat source? Like when you are standing under the sun, when you are standing near a stove, or in winter when we have that uh, um, fire, then when you are sitting near to it, when we are standing near to it, so is there any physical contact between us and 
the heat source yes yes no so how that heat it is reaching us from that source what do you think yes you may answer yes madam all right yes more or less you all are near to it let's see why so why it happens it happens due to the third method of heat transfer that is known as radiation which is one of the method of heat transfer yes you must have heard about radiation there are different concepts related to radiation but today we are going to focus mostly on radiation as a method of heat transfer right and we are going to explore further about it in today's lesson so what are our learning outcomes for today's lesson first of all we are going to talk about radiation explain radiation as a method of heat transfer then we will differentiate between good we will differentiate between radiators and absorbers
because of the phenomena that is known as radiation. So what is radiation? Radiation is a method of heat transfer in which heat from the source reaches the object okay, through electromagnetic waves and we call them radiations okay and these waves can be infrared waves okay uh, these waves can be microwaves as well but usually we call them electromagnetic radiations or waves all right and a very very good example of that is what the heat reaches from sun to the earth. Is there any medium between sun and earth? Means, is there any, are there any particles present? No. So, what is in between sun and earth? Yes, yes, you may answer. Yes, there is an empty space, and that empty space is known as vacuum. Very good. So that vacuum is actually there and you know very well that uh, the convection and conduction is not possible in vacuum but now you should be knowing that radiation which is the third method of heat transfer it is actually possible in vacuum means it can pass through vacuum and it reaches to the earth. And this is not the only example. There are a lot more other examples of radiation which we use in our daily life that we are going to explore today. Alright? Yes, children, you uh, may ask questions if you have any unusual till now. Okay. Yes, as you are asking about the radiation and uh, other methods of heat transfer and you are asking about the change in temperature, yes, change in temperature happens when uh, heat transfer due to the method of radiation from a heat source to the object, so the change in the temperature of the object takes place and it heats up, yes. And there are some examples which uh, we are using too much in our daily life and that we are going to explore and we will discuss today. Okay. All right. So, is it clear, children? Shall we move on to the exploration of another activity? Yes. Okay. So we are going to investigate about the good absorbers. But the question is that what are absorbers and reflectors? Let me tell you. Okay, they are good absorbers, so during the daytime, during sunlight, 
they absorb a lot of heat and then they convert that heat into uh, then we convert that uh, heat into electrical energy okay so what is this it's an aluminium foil okay um when we park our car uh, uh, like uh, in a hot sunny day and we cover the windscreen with what we cover the windscreen yes yes with aluminium foil why do we do so because what happens when light falls on it what happens it reflects okay let's do this experiment i am going to divide the people in four groups and i am going to provide you with the activity sheets okay and you people are going to explore yourself that how this good absorber and reflector they work all right okay so this is your activity sheet this is your activity sheet okay your activity sheet all right read the instructions here for the children going to 
replace it. Please uh, keep it for two minutes. Okay. Yes, be careful with the fame. Your fame hot. Your hand is getting hot. Okay, complete your activity and uh, fill your activity sheet based on your observations. Yes, you need my help? You can come. Yes, this group has this group has completed and now they are filling their sheets. That group has also done. Are you going for? Alright. You need my help? No? Okay. Okay, you all are done? That's good. If you are done, please show me thumbs up. Yes. Alright. So Shall we move this uh, discussion? Are you ready? Okay. So, when you kept your hand near the heat source for two minutes, what did you feel? You all have read the answer of this question in your worksheet, in your activity sheet. Yes, which group wants to tell me? Yes, that group number four. What did you feel? Yes, you felt hot. Okay, then group number one, I want you to give an answer. When you covered it with black cloth, then what did you feel? What happened? Yes. Yes. When you have covered it with black cloth, you felt more heat as compared to this when your hand was not covered with anything. Okay. Then, group number three, when you place aluminum foil in between your hand and heat source, do you feel the same heat? In between means like when you wrapped it. Okay? Yes, group number three. Alright. Yes. Now you did not feel the same heat as you did in step number two. Why is it so? 
Why is it so? Who will tell me why is it so? Why there is a difference in the heat, sensation or feeling when you kept your hand near the heat source without covering your hands with anything, then covered with black cloth and then covered with aluminium foil. Can anybody tell me? Yes, group number four would like to answer. Yes. Okay. So when you are covering it with black cloth, so what happens? Yes, the heat is absorbed. So what we are going to talk about this black cloth or what we will say this black cloth, we will call it what? Absorber. Isn't it? And the heat source from which the heat is released, that is known as radiator. Alright? And what is this aluminium foil? It will be known as Yes, you may tell. It will be known as reflector. Or we also call it bad absorber. So, what did we do actually? We investigated absorbers and absorber and a reflector and there are some good absorbers, very good absorbers like black color okay and no substances which do not absorb heat and they reflect heat they are known as reflectors or we also call them bad absorbers. So you have investigated yourself that which one is the absorber and which one is the reflector and which one is the heat source over here you will have used? Yes, spirit lamp. Okay. So, in your worksheet, it's written that explain what difference did you feel when you follow step number 3 and 4. So, you will have explained it. So, identify and write down the terms used for black cloth and, and aluminium foil. So, you people have already written that black cloth is known as absorber and aluminium foil is known as reflector. Okay. Yes, any confusion children, anybody is having any question you want to ask related to this? Any question? Are you clear about the concept of good absorbers and bad absorbers, that is absorbers and reflectors? Okay. Because in the next part of the lesson, I am going to ask you a few examples from our daily life. And you have to elaborate. Okay? Alright. So, let's move on. Yes, it's time for brain break. Let's relax. Okay, 
Okay, let's do it again. This is a road. 
made up of what? Tar. Yes. And what is happening over here? What do you see on the road? What happened? There are cracks, cracks and cracks. And in which season is this happening? Summer. So why does the tar on roads melt in summer? Why it happens? Why is it so? Because the tar is what? Black. And it's a summer, so it will absorb heat through the process of radiation. And what will happen to the temperature? It will increase. And when the temperature will increase, what will happen to the star? It will melt. Yes, this is also one of the problem in summers where the temperature rises too much like in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait and there are other, uh, some other countries. So the tar, the road which are actually made up of tar. So when they absorb heat, what happens is that they melt and then they have to uh, like not rebuild but they have to put the patches on the road. Okay, but uh, you know if you are going to search for uh, these things you will see that now the new technology is coming and people are researching on it and how we can solve this problem. Okay, so let's see another example. Yes, you all must have heard about astronauts. Where do they go? In the space. What do they wear when they go to the space? Yes, space suits. But why do you think that astronauts they wear shiny suits for spacewalk? Can you see this picture? This one uh, astronaut he is wearing white, and this one is also wearing a uh, shiny one. Mostly, why I have put these two pictures over here? Mostly the astronauts they wear the same suit. Okay. So why do you think they wear shiny suits? This shiny suit, how does it help? Because as you people know that in the space there is no atmosphere. Means no particles. So what happens? When the sun rays directly fall on the shiny suits, so if the suits will not be shiny, then what will happen? The sun ray heat will be absorbed by the suit, and the astronaut will not be able to survive. His body temperature is going to rise. So what happened? These shiny suits, they do what? They reflect. The rays of sun. And how do we classify them? What do we call them? Are they bad absorbers or good absorbers? They are bad absorbers. And we also call them reflectors. So this is also one of the reasons that whenever the people they go to the space, they wear shiny suits for spacewalk. So that those can act as a reflector and they can reflect heat from the sun. Now, beside these four examples, if any other example you want to share, like which you people have observed in your daily life or it is coming into your mind, you are welcome to talk about it. Yes, yes, you can tell me. Yes, about solar panels, yes. Solar panels are much uh, in use nowadays, okay, as uh, people are suffering from load shedding problem as well. So, solar panel is also uh, like it's one of the very good uh, replacement of the electricity. They are uh, like they are easy to uh, carry, they are easy to move. We can uh, move it from one place to another place. So, they absorb uh, sun's heat and then they store it and then we can move battery and we can convert it into electricity. Yes, this is also one of the very good example. Okay, any other example? 
Yes, there are a lot of examples which we have uh, actually discussed. Yes, you want to talk about the microwave. Yes, what happens in microwave? Alright, when we turn it on, the actually light, the radiation inside the microwave, that is actually causing the food to get hot. The food absorbs heat, the particles of the food, they get heat up and the food get hot. Okay, yes, is there any other example? Like when we uh, wash our uh, hairs and we want to get it dry and everything, what do we use? Yes, hair dryer. What is released from the hair dryer? Hot air. Yes. We follow which method of heat transfer? Radiation. That causes quick dryness of our hair. Yes, that's very nice. Okay, yes children. Any question? Okay, so let's quickly recap what we have studied up till now. We talked about the radiation. It is the third method of heat transfer. What was the first one? Conduction. And what was the second one? Convection. Yes. And we have also studied that heat transfer by radiation occurs when microwaves, infrared waves, radiation, visible light. Visible light means the light which we can see, like this tube light, bulb, and the light of spirit lamp. Or another form of electromagnetic radiation is emitted or absorbed. Emitted means by the heat source, and absorbed means that absorbed by these dark color objects. Okay. Then these waves will carry a bit of energy from the emitting body. Emitting body means this was the heat emitting body. This was the source when I lit the flame. Okay. This was the heat source. It was emitting the radiation. Like this tube light is emitting the light. The sun emitting the radiation. Radiation takes place through a vacuum or a transparent medium which can be either solid or liquid. Alright, any question? Anything you want to ask children? Anything? Are you all clear? Because now I am going to take your quiz to see how much you will have grasped the concept. Alright, so it's a quiz time. Are you ready for a quiz? Yes? Okay. Let me distribute these quiz worksheets. Okay, your time for this quiz is 10 minutes. Yes. You can take this one. This one. Yes, this one. Okay. Read each and every question carefully and then take the correct answer. Ten minutes, okay? Keep an eye on the clock. The time is ten minutes. Yes, done children? Yes, if you are done, show me thumbs up. 
Yes, show me thumbs up. Yes, group one thumbs up. Okay, okay. Yes, I can see thumbs up all of you. Okay, that's very good. Okay, so what do you think? How much you have done correctly? That's very much confident. You think that your answers, all the answers are correct? Alright, now what you can do is that now group 1 and group 2 exchange your sheets. 3 and 4, you are going to exchange your sheets. Yes. Yes, hurry up, please. Take out your pencils or any colored, uh, any colored pencil or a simple pencil and take the correct answer and cross the wrong answer. Let's see the first question. The rays in the following picture represent which method of heat transfer? You all can see the picture. It's conduction, convection or radiation. Let me show you this one sheet on the laptop as well so that
Yes, which one? Yes, number A. And which letter of each also is taking place over here? Which one? Which one? Conduction. Yes. And which one is followed over here? Yes, conduction. Okay. Let's see question number 8, 9 and 10. Okay. Which of the following is an example of radiation as a method of heat transfer in daily life? What is the answer? Which of the following is an example of radiation as a method of heat transfer? Yes, number B. That's very good. Okay. And which method is this, children? Boiling water or a straw? Yes, it's convection. And which one is this? Conduction. Okay. And air conditioning unit, which, sorry, which of the following is an example of a device that uses radiation as a method of heat transfer? An air conditioning unit, a refrigerator, or hair dryer? Which one is the correct answer? Yes, a hair dryer. Convection takes place over here, con convection takes place over here. Here, convection and convection takes place over here. Okay, which of the following objects emit radiation in the form of heat? Ice water, glass, a light bulb, and a pencil. Yes, a light bulb. So, who put 10 out of 10? Who put 10 out of 10? Very good. Almost. Most of you. And who got 9 out of 10? That's very good. Anybody got 7? Alright. That's okay. But now you know the answers and you got to know that actually what is happening? And what was our first objective? Explain radiation as a method of heat transfer. So, are you all able to explain radiation as a method of heat transfer? Okay, let me refer back to the learning outcomes. What was the first learning outcome of today's lesson? Explain radiation as a method of heat transfer. You all can explain? Yes. Very good. Differentiate between radiators and absorbers. Now you all are able to differentiate between the radiators and absorbers. Good absorbers, bad absorbers, radiators. Okay. Identify four examples of radiation. That was our third learning outcome. So have we identified four? Yes, actually we have identified more than four. Okay. So for wrap up, of our lesson, what we are going to do is that we are going to have a uh, snowstorm in this summer season. What we will do is, I am going to give you a piece of paper, okay, take this, take this, and write whatever you have studied in today's lesson. And after writing, you just flag it up like this. Like this. And make a snowball. Okay? Make a snowball. Don't write your name. Just make a snowball. And then you will be having a snowball. Okay? Write it down. Two sentences, three sentences, whatever comes in your mind. Yes, today. Thumbs up. Okay. So, what you will do is that all of you please stand up. Yes. Move your chairs. Stand up. Your face is towards the wall. This side towards that wall. And this side towards that wall. Like I'm facing the wall. Like this. Okay. And you are going to throw your snowball on my clue. Is that clear? Is that clear to everyone? Okay. And after throwing the, throwing the snowball, you are going to pick up the nearest snowball, you are going to open it up and you will read what the other child has written. Okay. So, to the wall, your face to the wall and you are going to throw it like this. One, two, three, throw. Okay. Pick up the snowball which is nearest to you. Okay. Yes, let's start from group number one. 
okay radiation is a method of heat transfer aluminum is a good reflect good reflector okay yes okay yes uh, group number 2 you all four please share what is written on your supports okay heat always moves from hot object to cold object okay convection takes place in solids uh, convection takes place in liquids okay and radiation is actually electromagnetic waves okay yes the groups over here okay hair dryer uses radiation as a method of heat transfer okay solar panels are one of the useful things okay okay all right so did you enjoy this to fall in this uh, hot weather yes okay that's it uh, children thank you so much for your time and thank you so much uh, for your concentration okay see you soon in your next lesson